Pops. And Mrs. Flynn. Right, and we're here to do a podcast on this modeling task that we, we created on world oil production to help you with your type 2 scenarios that you have to do for your, for your, your IV. Um, this is a task that I just made up. It's about world oil production. And you're going to have to make a model for this data here. And this is referring to from the years 1990 to 2002 and millions of barrels produced per day of oil. Um, so the these tasks are all fairly similar. You get data and you have to define variables, parameters, and constraints as asked down here. And then use technology and to plot the points above. Well, variables. What do you, when they're talking about variables, in this case, which variables are they talking about? Hmm, the two things that are changing. Well, that would just be the year right. and the amount of oil. Right. So our MBPDs kind of thing. So um, those are our, var our, our, our variables. Um, the parameters are going to come when we make the model. And the constraints are, well, let's think about just constraints. Another way to think about constraints, I think, is like domain and range of these data, of this data. Okay. Um, what would like our, be our domain for the years? It's talking about oil. Something reasonable, I think. What it well, I mean, we have to think about well, how far back can we go. So right. when was oil discovered? I mean, we wouldn't talk about anything back mm -hmm. in... 1600s yeah. or something like that. I think yeah. it was somewhere in the 1800s, late 1800s it was, it was invented. And then even so, not until we start to get data on millions of barrels per day when it was actually used in industrial age. So there'd be a little bit of research to think about that or a conversation. Um, millions of barrels per day, talk about what the restraints on those could be. Okay, so then it says use technology to plot the data points above. Okay, well that's not so bad. Right. That's easy. We can just copy and paste that. All right, so copy this one. There's lots of programs available out there to do this. I'm preferable to this program called Autograph. And if I go, I've already got a graph, but I'll make a new page here for you so you can see the process. If I go over this key here and I'm going to add a set of data, Computers working really slow today. I got too many programs opened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I can just paste it in. Do, 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 yeah. There. Okay. It also does my labels and everything. It knows what to do. Nice. And I graph it, and it makes me a nice window. A little bit of a nice window. Let's change our constraints here. I go to the little wrench key, and we're gonna go from. We know we're talking about the X values are about, well, it starts at 1990, so I'll go 88. The maximum was 102, so I'll go 105. The Y value was somewhere just below 60, I think, so we'll go 58. But the highest, I'll go 70, it wasn't over 70, I believe. And we should get a picture of our data set there. Okay, and so when we're looking at this, if we go to our task, it says what type of model, what type of fun look at the data, consider the trends, what type of function could be used to model this data set, explain your choices. So we can think about all our parent functions. All right, what kind of, what kind of functions do you think we could use for this? We've got curvature here, concave down, concave up, a curve, what kind of functions do well, we know Well, it's definitely that do not that? linear, it's not Quadratic, I guess probably a cubic. Right, a cubic might work. It's got some curves to it. So let's make a cubic function analytically. Okay, so to do a cubic function analytically, we have, let's see if I can paste that table into here, to our notebook. So we have all these points. All right. And if we think about just what a cubic function looks like, um, we know it's y equals a oh. x to the third. I'm going to make this oh. yeah. plus b x squared plus c x plus d. Okay, so equals a x cubed. And my job is basically to find a, b, c, and d. Well, we can do that pretty easily. Well, I think. Mm. Right. Conceptually, <laughs> conceptually, it's easily. Yeah. So in order to do that, I got four variables, so I need four equations. So, and we have four points above. Right. If I, I got lots of points, so let's choose four of them throughout. doesn't matter which one. It doesn't like, matter. No. Nope. Maybe pick some. All right. And I, I think I've already done this, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and see which ones I've chosen already. I got 92, 
96, 98, 102. See if you remember those. All right. So this one here. Oh, I should get the highlighter out. That's okay. All right. 96. 96. 96. 98. 102. 102. Okay, so I'm going to take each of those and I'm going to plug them in to my equation. So your y value goes in the y? All right, so if I do and the first one that's circled in 92, so this is 60.12 equals a times 92 cubed plus b times 92 squared plus c times 92 plus d. I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to do that for each of these four equations, getting four equations. Okay, and once you have four equations with four unknown variables, All right. let's think that could get a, to be really ugly. <laughs> That'd be very ugly. Um, and so one of the things that we can do to help this task out is we can use our Wolfram Alpha. And so... Oh, that lovely website. It is lovely. And so I've typed this out already because I didn't want to do this live for you guys. So those are the four equations that we just established with the four different All points. Right. And if I go to Wolfram Alpha, and I type all these equations in. I start off with solve. So if I show you the beginning, it says solve, and there the equation, and I hit enter. It'll think for a second. Mine might think for a little bit longer than a second, my computer. And I think magic's about to happen. It is. <laughs> and this, this is totally fine. This is actually good use of technology. Because we're not concerned with how you, if you know how to solve systems of four equations. No, that's not the task. Right. We want you to be able to do it, and this is the appropriate use of technology. So here we go. Here are our equations all nicely listed for us. And here are A, B, C, and D. If we take those ver values... And you can just make a screenshot and put this in your portfolio. Oh, that's a great idea. You just take a screenshot, dump it in your portfolio, and you are set. So one of the next tasks it says to do is oh, it says to develop a model that fits on a new set of axes, plot the data in your function. We already have the data done, so now we just have to come up with the function. Right. And we know uh, these are our values for A, B, C, and D. Let's go to our computer and type them in. So I'm going to hit the Enter key which we'll call it my equations, and I just type it in. y equals negative 0 0.0. And the more decimal points, the more accurate your right. graph's going to be. Make sure I don't type these in wrong, though. Okay. 10.9136. 10 minus 1050.02x plus 33. Point six eight four point seven. Oh, three three six eight four point seven. Uh, no right. point. There you go. There we go. And so, if we've done everything right, it should fit nicely into our curve. And not it, so bad. Should go so through bad. four points, and it, it looks like it does. Yeah, it looks like it was a, this one, that one, this one, and down over here somewhere. Okay. Okay. Nice. And so that's we've analytically made this model using technology to help in, enhance the task and make it more accessible to us. And so if we look at our task, what it says to do, it says, how well does your model fit the data? Revise the model if you deem it necessary. Explain your process. That's a lot of communication there. There is a lot of communication. And so if I look at the data, I should talk about the graph and talk about how it talks about the points, it fits the curvature aspects. And then more analytically though, I should go to Excel and make some tables here and compare those differences. There's another podcast that Mr. White made that you can check out and uh, see how, how to make those tables. Okay, so that's one analytical method we, we could have used. Another one we could have done, we could have just as easily, this kind of looks like a sine or cosine curve. Ah, trig function. Right, a trig function is up and down. So we could have made a trig function just as easily. Okay, so if I say y equals a cosine, cosine 
parenthesis B, parenthesis X minus C. Oh, there's a typo there. Parenthesis plus D. Okay, now I have to go about finding A, B, C, and D. Well, as we develop our model, we know how to do this by transformations. So here's another way that we could have made our model. If we consider first this function here, if I move my d value, algebraically I should write this down in my portfolio, but if I take the minimum and the maximum and find the middle between them, we should be able to get our uh, principal axes. And so if we take those two values, which is about uh, 60 and 68 or 69, we get about 64.5. Now we're just estimating here, and you guys can do it better. And at this point, I would take a screenshot of that, which shows the development of the model. Okay, and then you can go on to your next transformation, maybe start with A. Let's start with A. Amplitude. Right, and now we find out this is a difference of about 8, 8 and a little bit. So half of that 8 and a little bit is maybe 4.2. Again, just estimating. So Another we, screenshot, explanation. Right, as you find your variable for the A. And then we can do our uh, period. Our period, well, here's 92. Here's 102. 102.92. So that is 102.92. Oh, 100. Oh, 100. There we go. 100. Okay, I thought it looked, something looked funny. So that's a difference of 8. So that's half a period, so a full period is 16. 2 pi divided by 16 is something like 0. 0.349, I think. Let's see. Okay. Now the last thing we do, and take a screenshot, put it in your portfolio, talk about getting the B value. And then the last thing is to do the C value. This maximum, let's move it right on top of here at 100. So we type in 100, enter. And it's pretty close. I might. And you can go... make adjustments too as you're going along. And I mean, we're just doing this quickly so you right. guys get the gist of it. But right, you can play around a little bit yeah. as needed. Um, and then you can do this analytic or algebraically and show how you got these transformations. Take a screenshot, punch it in. And so if we look at our task, we have explained our process. We have revised the model as it needs necessary. The next thing to do would be use technology to develop a model. We haven't done that yet. And at this point, we're going to stop it and uh, have the new technology part for the second half.